Time for a spiritual awakening. Time for a spiritual awakening. That's the title of this episode, Your Divinity. Let's read a little bit about it from Science of Mind magazine. This is the May 2021 issue. And the title of this short uh, entry for May 20, excuse me, May 13th is Totally Holy. You are purely, completely, totally, absolutely, thoroughly, fully, entirely, utterly, and unconditionally holy. This means you are totally divine. You are sacred. Allow your numinous expression to rise for all the world to see. No matter what the world attempts to tell you about yourself, the world can never take away your divinity. This is something your, you wholly are now, not something you earn. It continues, the life that creates and sustains everything is your life now. And the affirmation for today, I am now spirit expressing. Well, does that sound uh, egotistical, kind of uh, snooty? Well, I'm spirit and I'm holy and I'm divine. Well, if it does, uh, I want to in some way uh, unimpress that thought for you and for me. There's nothing egoic or egotistical or selfish uh, about recognizing our divinity. Everybody is divine and an expression of God. Everyone is an expression of the expression of love, divinity, holiness. So there's, there's nothing that makes me special. It just makes me special amongst everybody who's special. We're all holy. We're all totally holy. And there's nothing presumptuous about it. I appreciate teaching that to everybody who has self-esteem issues. And I think that includes everybody. Because self-esteem issues really mean that we feel unworthy somehow, different, uh, outside of the norm, uh, not, not quite uh, with it, uh, you know, fill in the blank. But th the truth is that we're all an expression of God. And God, which is the name that I, I give to the creative intelligence or spirit that is behind every energetic expression called man and woman, uh, and all sentient beings and all expressions of form, as well as content, that which is our essence, is God. Well, if, if that's the case, and I know it to be true, I know it in my heart and my mind and my soul to be true, then there's nothing to feel, you know, uh, less than in self-esteem uh, measures. Our self-esteem and our self-worth is inherent in the, the truth that we are as the God, we are as the Buddha, we are as the Christ. Uh, there are no exceptions to that rule. And when we start expressing and living consistent with our Buddhahood and our Christhood, I think things start to naturally fall into place. And what I mean by naturally is it's not false ego. It's not, uh, you know, self-aggrandizement. Uh, it's not grandiosity. It's the nature of our grandeur. This is who and what we are. And we want to express that to its fullest degree. And, and that's, I think, what life's about, filling, uh, filling it out consciously, higher, higher consciousness, more loving, more godlike, more Christ-like, more Buddha-centered, uh, you know, as the Tao. The Tao is the way. We want to live consistent with the way. This is the nature of the ministry that, you know, we're engaged in telling everybody you count you are exactly what god created and since god created you in that way 
uh, you are special. But that applies to everybody. So everybody's worthy. Everybody is sacred. Everybody is divine. And that makes for a happy, joyous, and free expression of one's life. I've written something today that I'll um, read to you. Uh, all of it or maybe just part of it, but I, I wanted to express this in, um, you know, in uh, alignment with the holiness that we are. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I can make it count. I can and will be happy, joyous and free, which is my natural state of being. The energy enlivening me is divine and omnipotent. This energy is source. I express it naturally. It is loving. It is kindness towards self and others. I channel this energy and vibration called love as uh, a visible light and a oneness of being with all the universe. If I forget my true nature, I can always reach deep within to the idea of truth and reawaken. Life is a series of awakening moments to the truth, and this sets my spirit free. The spirit is birthless and eternal. Life after life continues in an upward spiral towards enlightened self actualization as the Tao, the Christ, and the Buddha state of mind. Taking moments of spiritual refreshment throughout the day, I bask in the light of source energy, recharging my life force. All is well in my world. I know and I recharge my knowing and recharge again. My life continues. I am guided with each renewal, what is to be done and what is to be said, what to think and express eternally. Each expression is an infinite production based in love and light, kindness and interbeing. I raise my consciousness with every holy instant of recharge and extension of love. Well, this is a short essay that I wrote uh, today, May 15th, 2021, and uh, it, it just flowed naturally. I really encourage you all as well, if you're not already journaling and writing essays, uh, and expressing your creative uh, inward knowledge of truth, uh, let it come out. Use the pen, use the computer, uh, use a dictating, you know, recording mechanism of some sort, but express yourself. You know, that was the notion behind these episodes that I video for the NECAT uh, TV, community TV network. I want to express something that, that counts and makes a difference as I teach, I learn. And as I teach, I hope others learn. So that's the nature, I think, of the wisdom for today. We are sacred. We are holy. We are divine. And that is the truth. Nothing phony about it. Nothing uh, uppity about it at all. We are as God created us. And that can never be in any way changed. We can never separate from our God identity. We can never be less than or can we see others as less than? We might imagine them as less than or greater than we are, but it's not the case at all. Everybody is the same. It's a universe, a oneness, a unity. There's only one Christ, Buddha, Tao, Krishna. There's only one light, the Shekhinah. That's the truth. And it, of course, flows through each and every one of us. So again, thank you for joining us today. I've got some other readings that I want to share with you, but the main point is our holiness, our sacredness. How are you expressing it to yourself? 
You know, that's the first step. We have to identify with the truth. Otherwise, everything that we experience really leads to anxiety and fear. And we don't want that. Uh, we've lived enough with fear, anxiety, and a sense of separateness. Let's get on with the truth. Let's get with the godly program, the godly program of the Buddha and the Christ. And that is living each person under their own um, fig tree in peace and serenity, respecting each other, loving each other, forgiving anything that we feel was done to us and we have a resentment. Uh, let it go. Those are anchors. Just earlier today, I was speaking with my wife about forgiving uh, people and places and things that we feel that were detrimental for us in the past. The past is over. If it at all existed the way we imagined, uh, there is no objective uh, experience of the truth in the outer world. The world is a subjective view uh, based on our um, interpretations. Interpretations are driven either by God as our true nature, where we see everything with loving eyes, or our interpretation is uh, egoic, fearful, and we feel threatened and separate from God and others and ourselves, our true selves. So of course it's important that we identify every day in prayer and meditation and in our speech and our behavior, uh, in our very being every day with the truth. That sets us free. That reminds us that others are free and we join with them in holiness. Well, let's go on to another reading. And this reading is uh, from a book by Ernest Holmes, who founded uh, the uh, Science of Mind. And it's called This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes. And uh, listen to this and, and see how it uh, dovetails with what we've been talking about. It says, you are to know that good keeps you in perfect activity surrounds you with love and friendship and brings the experience of joy to everything you do. You are to impart an atmosphere of confidence and faith, which uplifts and enlightens everything in your environment. It is only as you live affirmatively that you can be happy. Well, let's stop right there and uh, we'll continue uh, in a moment. I just want to comment on that. Ernest Holmes had such a wonderful, positive view about life, consistent with the God that is within us, the holiness of the Buddha, the, the Lord Buddha, the Lord Jesus, uh, the Lord Krishna, all of those titles and various names for that which we are and that which is energizing us to be who we are simply uplifts me when I speak those words. I know that I'm of the Christ and Buddha nature, and I want to fulfill that more and more each day, raising my consciousness, awakening more and more to the truth, the truth that sets us free. And that is perfect love, which casts out all fear, all misperception, all misunderstandings between people. I don't care what's happened, what's been said, what you feel has been done. There is a way through the Lord that you can uh, forgive. That you can undo in your mind that which seems to be a block to the awareness of love. Let it go. It's in the past. It isn't currently happening. And if it is currently happening, I know that I or you are in some way contributing to the ongoingness in our lives of that which is unpleasant. We but do it to ourselves. So once we let go of the past and we place the future in the hands of God, we know that we are safe and we know that we can let go of the resentments. These grievances are really grievances and attacks against ourselves. They aren't against somebody else. There's no one out there except projections of images that come from our own minds. 
This is a foundational truth that needs a real um, uh, analysis within ourselves. Look at the truth you're making up your whole life. You've made it up. Make it up in alignment with God's will, that you'd be happy, that you'd be a, a source of light, that you'd be a free of resentments towards self and imagined others. Let it go. It's the only way really to awaken fully to the heaven that's within us, to the Buddha that is within us. Seek the spaciousness of the Buddha. Recognize that it's within your mind. It isn't outside of us. The outside will take care of itself as an expression or a, a mirror of the effect of the cause of our minds. What is our mind causing? Once we let that go and we let God, we let the Buddha and the Christ and the Krishna and the Tao, we know that we're on the right track. Why? Because we know serenity. We know peace. We know fulfillment. We know that our lives mean something. This is the first day of the rest of my life. We'll continue reading from this thing called You by Ernest Holmes. We were reading, knowing that there is but one spirit in which everyone lives, moves, and has his being. You are to feel this spirit not only in your consciousness, but in your affairs. You are to hold conscious communion with this spirit in humanity. In a hand clasp, you can feel it, its warmth and color. In the exchange of thought, you are to feel the presence of the divine. You are to sense it in everything. You are united with all. You are one with the eternal light itself. The presence of spirit within you blesses everyone you meet, tends to heal everything you touch, brings gladness into the life of everyone you contact. Therefore, you are a blessing to yourself, to humankind, and to the day in which you live. Well, we'll conclude uh, this entry in this book with an affirmative prayer in a moment. But I want to underscore what I've just read. Uh, you are a spirit, and, and spirit defines humanity. Can you imagine that? Everything is spirit. Everything is spirit, or love, or light. Everything is calling for love, calling your name, saying, love me, hold on to me dearly not with a, a grasping and an attachment, but with a oneness, a oneness in heaven. This unity, this expression of the Buddha that we share, we're all one Sangha, one church, one community, one group of congregate, congregations that knows the truth about each of us. And we, we uphold that truth. We support each other, we give to each other, we encourage each other. And first and foremost, we forgive each other because oftentimes we've condemned. Right now in the news, there's another um, difficulty, uh, a war in the Middle East between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Uh, there, to me, it's been countless times that there have been these wars. Uh, and, they, and they happen with regularity simply because people don't recognize the, the, the divinity within themselves and each other. Can you imagine if the Israelis and the Palestinians recognize the holiness, the sacredness and divinity that each of us, uh, you know, is? That's our nature. Would, would we pick up arms against each other? Would we seek to kill each other? Over what? We can share land. We can share food. We can share sustenance. All of that can be shared. Why? Because we're sharing it basically with ourselves. As I give to you, I'm receiving. As you give to me, you're receiving. I'm you, you are me. Now that's in the spiritual sense, which is our true identity. 
Yes, it looks like we're separate individuals. And I understand that the, uh, the body in the world level, in the three-dimensional world, it appears that way. But we want to bring the three-dimensional world to our spiritual nature and our spiritual nature to the three-dimensional world. That's what counts. That's what makes the difference. That's what solves, you know, brings peace to the world. And then it's said that once we've learned all these lessons of peace and oneness and love, uh, then we move on from the three-dimensional world to an awakeness and an awareness of a fourth dimension and a fifth dimension where things are of a higher consciousness. So we're here to learn a lesson. And I want to uh, share my willingness with you and your willingness to understand that in this three-dimensional world, we're here to learn and we're here to practice. I have a friend of mine who keeps saying, what, what's this business about practicing? Why are we practicing? Why don't we just do it? And of course, that's the nature of the truth. We practice the truth until it becomes so habitual that it's really our, our it is our nature and we aren't practicing anymore. We are practicing because it just comes naturally. It is our nature. Well, here's an affirmative prayer consistent with what we've been reading here in the uh, this thing called You by Ernest Holmes. Today, I uncover the perfection within me. In its fullness, I reveal the indwelling kingdom. I look out upon the world of my affairs, knowing that the spirit within me makes my way both immediate and easy. I know there's nothing in me that could possibly obstruct or withhold the divine circuit of life and love, which good is. My word dissolves every negative thought or impulse that could throw a shadow over my perfection. Good flows through me to all. Good shines through my thoughts and actions. Good harmonizes my body so that it is revitalized and manifests perfection in every cell, every organ, and in every function. Good harmonizes my mind so that love sings joyously in my heart. I am completely conscious of all good in me, around me, and in all that is. I am in complete unity with good. I have complete confidence in my knowledge and understanding of the law of good. I not only know what the law is, I know how to use it. I know that I shall obtain definite results through the use of the law. I recognize and realize the doubts about my ability to use this law of good are things of thought. What thought has produced, thought can change. Knowing this, having confidence in my ability to use the law and using it daily for specific purposes, gradually I build up an unshakable faith, both in the law and the possibility of demonstrating it. There's no doubt in me, no uncertainty rising through me. My mind rejoices in certainty and in assurance. I confidently expect that my word shall not return to me void. Concluding this prayer treatment, therefore today I declare that the law of the God Lord is perfect in everything I do. It will externalize happiness. It will bring every good thing to me. Today, I am inwardly aware that there is a secret way of the soul. There is a secret pathway of peace. There is an invisible presence forever externalizing itself for me and through me. Today, I believe in divine guidance. Today, I believe that underneath are the everlasting arms. Today, I rest in this divine assurance in this divine security. I know 
not only that all is well with my soul, my spirit, and my mind, all is well with my affairs. And that's the end of that uh, prayer treatment. Well, that prayer treatment, I think, summarized quite well everything that we had read and said leading up to it. Uh, it was a wonderful expression of the truth. And the truth not only sets me free, but it sets the wheels in motion for the world to reflect back to me the good of the law of cause and effect. My mind has shifted to a cause of good and love. And so the world reflects back to me the effect or mirroring of the effect of good and of love. Love is the truth. Love illuminates. Love is the light. I know this because I've seen it in every interaction. Do you have any relationships that need to be forgiven? Do you have any experiences that in some way need to be reframed with the law of good. Can you take those experiences, those people, uh, those ideas that you have and bring them to the light, bring them to the illumination of the Christ and the Buddha and the Tao and the Shekhinah and the Buddha's uh, light. Take it to that refuge, that place within your mind that you know and I know is where you live, where you come from, and where those events came from. And we can change those events, as it said in this prayer treatment. My change in thinking will change those events or the memories of those events. My thoughts rule everything that I think, everything that I experience, everything that I see, everything that I say. It's all consistent with the law of good, the law of infinity, the law of Christ as me, as you. Well, this is the truth and we know it to be true. So the practice, I think, if I were to give out a challenge today would be to say to you, find experiences in your past that are resent filled, grievances that you hold, uh, you know, thoughts about others that are negative and see how positive you can bring up the law of good with these people and these experiences. See how much forgiveness you can generate in your mind when you align with the law of good. This is the truth. This will set you free. This is the nature and the way. This is the way that's been taught by all the mystics all the prophets, all the holy and sacred texts, all the scriptures, they all talk about loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor because your neighbor is the same as yourself. We're all one in spirit, and that's the truth. Well, letting go and letting God is the idea, and knowing you're totally uh, holy, that is the nature and the way.